Hello, and happy holidays from Rent Arb Studios Comics. I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comics I've read, the Kickstarters I've backed, and uh, where you can find these comics and back these comics, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a uh, good time with your families. Hope you were safe, uh, stayed away from loved ones who were sick or at risk, and uh, yeah, it's been a little while. I took a break off from making videos. I didn't make a video during the uh, Christmas break, really. And so, for one, because I was waiting for a uh, a comic to come that was uh, Christmas related, it was Half Past Danger, and uh, it was a Christmas special, and it never showed up. I'm still waiting for it. Hopefully I get it. Um, it would be nice to read it around this time instead of in the middle of the spring. Who knows when I'll get it. Um, so yeah, let me start with uh, what I've been reading since then. Uh, since I didn't have that book, I read Spider-Man 2099. This is my favorite Spider-Man 2099 shirt. Well, actually, it's the only Spider-Man 2099 shirt I've got, but you get the idea. Anyway, so I recently read um, issues 10, 11, 12, and 13 of Spider-Man 2099. Uh, these are from, I think they're from 93 or 2. Let's see here. Yeah, these are these are uh, copyrighted as 93. So, yeah, these are from 1993. Um, I've been reading comics for a little while, obviously. Because I remember being a, a kid and getting these... Uh, I used to have a subscription and Marvel would send these straight to me because I got sick of trying to beg my parents to... Uh, take me to a shop so that I could pick up my comics so I started a subscription and yeah this look at that cover I mean it's freaking awesome uh, Rick Leonardi always did an awesome job on them I always liked his uh, sketchy style and so let's start in with uh, the credits here um, let's see here Spider-Man 2099 Issues 10, 11, 12, and 13 are written by Peter David. They have art by Rick Leonardi, inked by Al Williamson, lettered by Rick Parker, colored by Steve Busolato, and edited by Joey Cavallari, and editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. So, and obviously these are Marvel comics, because they're Spider-Man. Uh, I really can't wait till the Spider-Verse comes out with more Spider-Man 2099 in it than just a post credit scene, but, uh, yeah, because I seriously loved Spider-Man 2099 when I was, uh, let's see, 93, I was probably a teenager by then. I do remember uh, drawing these in middle school over here in the States, that's the uh, school you went to after elementary, so... There's Spider-Man 2099 right there. Miguel O'Hara, as he is known, out of costume. And, uh, yeah, a lot of cool art. Let's see, what were my thoughts on these? Um, so he deals with, he has a hologram girl that uh, basically is in the future 2099. They have answering machines that are holograms. And his is a hologram named Lila. And uh, she becomes self-aware in this, and he asks her opinion, and she says, I think I love you. And he's like, well, uh, I'm going to go to work now. Stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I've always liked Peter David's writing. Uh, he wrote the uh, X Factor that made me fall in love with the Multiple Man as my favorite character. So, yeah, his writing on Spider-Man 2099 will always be one of my favorites. Um, Miguel O'Hara, he meets a co-worker named Jordan Boone in this, in one of these comics, in this uh, run, and, um, oh shoot, don't want to show you an ad. Alright, he meets a character named Jordan Boone, okay, Let's see if I can get to that. And uh, he's working on a virtual unreality unreal portal, and it explodes, as you can see here. And 
Uh, this guy that looks like he's from the Spartan era, he shows up, and he's like, he's like, you guys are messing with things you don't understand, and all sorts of stuff like that. It's kind of dumb. Well, not really dumb, but it's kind of weird, and uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that. There's a scene where this guy, Thanatos, has him in a uh, a weird dreamlike world. Um, purgatory is what he called it. It was loopy, and it was cool stuff going on. Um, let me see if I can show you some pictures of that. Uh, nope, that's in the next issue that he gets in there. Whoops. Jumping ahead of myself. Um, yeah, like I said, I've been, I read these a long time ago when I was a teenager. And I re I'm rereading them now. I think I'm missing issue 14. So I'll have to track that one down at the local comic shop. One thing I like about this is the ads in it. They're a little nostalgic to me because I remember seeing these ads and being like, Ooh, what's that? I can't wait till it comes out. Nightmare Before Christmas. That's how old these are. Um, and I think there's another one where the ad was uh, Coneheads. Nope, not that one. And yeah, Coneheads is another one of my favorite movies. You know, Red Hot Chili Peppers song in the soundtrack, Chris Farley, all that good stuff. I, I still, to, day, to this day, quote a lot of stuff from Coneheads. Um, so yeah, Spider-Man 2099, um, I should get these in trade. That way I don't have to chase down the volume and all that fun stuff. I, I have issue one autographed by Peter David. One of my favorite uh, moments was meeting Peter David at Salt Lake Comic Con, Fan X, and uh, being able to chat with him about Multiple Man, Spider-Man 2099, and Hulk, and stuff like that. Really cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it for those issues. That's all I will talk about for there. Um, next, I will move on to another Spider-Man 2099. This one just came out this year. Um, and this is a trade set. I think it collects volumes 32 to 36 of Amazing Spider-Man. And uh, so in this, well, let's start with the credits first. So the credits here is uh, writer Nick Spencer, artist Patrick Gleason with coloring by Matthew Wilson, D. Cuniff, and Chris O'Halloran. Also, art by Basal Basaldua, and other colorings by Steve Fershow, and uh, yeah, co cover art by Ryan Otley, Nathan Fairbain, and Tony Daniel. So, uh, yeah, I, I started a hold on Amazing Spider-Man because of Ryan Otley, and sadly, with uh, my love for Spider-Man 2099, there is not any uh, Spider-Man 2099 art by Otley done in here. Um, so it was it was a little upsetting that uh, the reason I started to hold on this was because of Otley, and when he finally gets to meet my favorite character, Otley doesn't get to draw Spider-Man 2099. So. I know there is a little controversy surrounding why Otley got uh, taken off of the Spider-Man book, and uh, so it is, it happens, but um, yeah. So in this book, Spider-Man uh, deals with a lot of random stuff, um, like he's working on a science project with uh, his co-students, and he runs into the... Silver Sabre, Silver Sable, and the Chameleon and Doctor Doom, and in the in the middle of all these crazy things going on, uh, Spider-Man 2099 Miguel O'Hara gets sucked into this time, and uh, basically, that's pretty much it. It's, I mean, it doesn't really get into any meat of any story, and um, then it's over, just like that. So let me see if I can find the Otley page here. Nope. It said Otley as it did it one of the covers, but anyway. 
that's definitely not Ryan Otley. Um, so yeah, it's kind of sad to find, to get some Spider-Man 2099 in here, and then uh, yeah, and he bar he's barely going, does anything, and then he disappears again. So it's kind of who knows? Maybe the next issue, which is in my read pile, um, will have some more Spider-Man 2099 in it. Maybe not. Maybe he got sent back to his own timeline again. Uh, that's all I really got to say about it because, like, nothing really happened in these in this trade, and uh, that's it. So um, that's all my reads today. Is the uh, is 2099s. And uh, sadly, I didn't have that Christmas special to be able to read during this Christmas episode. And but I did get a lot of mailbox, so oh, I don't have my mailbox sign with me to go do the thing. But uh, so I got a pin in the mail, and uh, this came from Adept Kickstarter that I did, um, Charlie Stickney book. It's pretty awesome. It's got the uh, the concert ticket looking thing and Adept is their or uh, Immortal Studios is their little logo that's a sticker so I got the Immortal Studios pin with this uh, kickstart and this just came all on its own in its own little teeny envelope but I will throw that in with my uh, pin collection hopefully this pandemic will go away so I can go back to uh, wearing them in my ties to church but for now, it's just a collection, not being used. And also, what I got is um, Vampire Bloodlines, which I backed. Uh, I got the uh, cosplay cover. I think this is this is either. Um, let me see here. This is at Rizzy Un on Twitter, or it's Ivy Cosplay. I think it's Rizzy though. And uh, yeah. These, as you can see, are tiny. Um, this is uh, the standard comic book size, and this is how big these are. I was not expecting them to be uh, tiny, but it's kind of cool. I, we'll see how it goes when I read it. The art in here looks pretty cool. Check out that art. Uh, so this is Vampire Bloodlines, and these were sent to me uh, Kablam shipped out their uh, Kickstarter rewards. And as you know, I'm... A, I print my books at Kablam. So Kablam's awesome. It's awesome that they send out books for you when you do a Kickstarter. And these will go into the read pile. I can't wait to read Vampire Bloodlines. It looks like the same book, other than uh, one being the drawn cover and one being the cosplay cover. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, I will. those will go into the read pile. Also, one I got from... Uh, Kablam ship theirs out too is uh, Dark Threads Surfer Girl which I remember back in this and I, I thought I backed out because of money but maybe my funds were okay and I re I went back in and backed it this was on Indiegogo and uh, yeah it looks really pretty it's got a cool textured cover and the art inside looks amazing so that'll go in the read pile along with uh, the Bloodlines and it's also a Kablam printing so that's cool too can't wait to get that to that in the read pile my read pile's getting insane and here's another one that's gonna be going into that this one came with pins whoops I just dropped it this is for goodness sake volume 2 oh man I've been waiting for this one because that first read well I dropped the pins again the first read of, uh, for goodness sake, volume one, um, it blew me away. It is a very, very good story, awesome art, and uh, so yeah, as soon as I read volume one, I jumped on there and I backed volume two, and because I collect pins, I made sure that I got the pins. Um, I think, if I remember right, this girl's name is Rain, and I cannot remember the uh, demon guy his name but yeah so uh, for goodness sake volume 2 going into the repile along with uh, bloodlines and dark thread surfer girl and I missed the uh, Kickstarter on this one but 
uh, Antarctic Press, I saw on Twitter, um, that they they added this to their stock, and uh, so I went on there and I ordered this. The whole trade, two rags, it is a zombie apocalypse story, and about a girl that, her name's Regina Ragalski, and she uh, goes, I guess she goes by the nickname of Rags, which makes sense, you know. So, and that's a thick volume too. So that's a lot of pages. Can't wait to get through that one. Um, yes, Rags. That one's going in the read pile also. So much going in the read pile this week. And I finally got, by the time I get to Dallas, one and two, and a side story called The Trinity Pod Project, all from the universe of by the time I get to Dallas. This is a uh, person in the medical field. I think he's a doctor. He writes these comics when he's got spare time. And uh, yeah, it's a, this is about a pandemic where um, a bunch of people suddenly have the urge to get to one spot, and that happens to be in Dallas. And whether they're driving, walking, mowing the lawn, whatever, they just drop what they're doing and go right there, which is disaster if you're a pilot or driving or all that stuff. But, uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Probably wasn't expecting there to be a pandemic when he created a comic about a pandemic, but that's crazy stuff, huh? Okay, so, yep, that's what I got in, in the mail. Oh yeah, one more thing that I also got in the mail is a from Redbubble. There it is, Redbubble right there. From Redbubble.com, you know, you may know that I have been selling some of my merch on Redbubble, and check this out. I got me a, a big uh, Rent and Arb Studios sticker. This is, it feels like it's about six inches. So that is going to be going on one of my vehicles, or I got a big one, 12 incher. So I don't know. My wife thinks it's dumb that I want to put these stickers on my vehicle, but I don't know. That's how I am. I like I like uh, being able to identify my vehicles and whatnot with my name, my logo. So that's that's what another thing I got in the mail. Oh, uh, since it's the week after Christmas, I thought I'd mention what I got for Christmas. Um, my my kids got me a new Funko. This is a snowman that looks like Captain America. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. I love it. He's, he bobbles, too. He's bobblehead. So that's a pretty cool one. I'll throw that in my collection. I'll put him right here next to Jack and Sally. And, uh, speaking of red bubble, this is what I got my wife. Uh, it is a mug that says, Is it Friday yet? And then it has a pencil on it that says Mrs. B with the ladybug, because my wife loves ladybugs. She had a Is It Friday mug, and it broke, and uh, so I thought I will just make her a new one uh, with my own little flair to it, the ladybug, and uh, that's what I got my wife for Christmas. While I was out shopping with my boys, um, we were supposed to be getting something for my father-in-law, and my son Johnny he walks by this, this, and he suddenly throws it behind his back, and he's like, um, and he's holding it behind his back the whole time we're shopping, and at the register, he throws it on there, and, uh, the checker, she's like, oh, is this all? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not supposed to know that I'm getting this, and so he wanted to get me this grill brush to clean the grill, and, uh, I thought it was really cute that he wanted to hide that from me and surprise me with it. Kids, he's he's seven. What do you do? They're so cute when they're that age. And uh, so yeah, Christmas was fun. My boys got some uh, radio control cars and drove those around and stuff. And we uh, spent some time with family. My father-in-law lives right through the backyard, so we were over there. And um, that's it. We had a good Christmas. The kids were good kids excited about it and that's the fun stuff about Christmas. I hope you guys had fun at Christmas and oh yeah I forgot to mention Kickstarters. The list is really small today because almost everything's either completed or nobody's kicked off anything that I don't know that I know about. So Thirsty is on Kickstarter right now until December 30th 
that's like tomorrow, I think. So check out Thirsty. It's by Pat Shand, uh, creator of the Destiny New York uh, universe. And these are some uh, not safe for kids or not safe for work comics. Um, they are some erotic stories, short stories. And yeah, check it out. You have just days to check it out or hours, depending on when you watch this or it's over. So check out Thirsty. Uh, that's all I've got for Kickstarters this week. Uh, so if you have something on Kickstarter right now and you say, hey, please talk about my Kickstarter or check it out, let me know. Hit me up in the comments or uh, on Twitter or Facebook or even email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. And uh, yeah, lately I've been watching, I have started watching um, the Harley Quinn cartoons and I plan on watching Wonder Woman tonight. So yeah, that's it. I'm done talking for now, and uh, hopefully I'll be back in the swing of making videos and doing stuff. Thank you for watching. Renton Arp Studios Comics. Bye-bye.